Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Octopus Builds where we are building out the fictional well that's not the fictional we're building out the Trident project for the fictional company Octopet Shop. In the previous episode we went ahead and we set up a couple of triggers to automatically deploy to QA in morning and lunchtime. So now let's talk a little bit about another scenario that will come up with some of our customers as well as it has come up quite a bit and uh, what has happened is we have gone out to production with version 1.0.1 and we can also see in staging that that also that is also the version that's currently out there however the developers they have started on the next version of the Trident project which is 1.1.2 and if we click into here, we can see that that's in fact what happened. In fact, we had 1.1.0 go out, but apparently there was a bug that was found, uh, so and that was fixed in 1.1.2. But now we've come across a bit of a problem. Because this application is out in production, users are using it. That's kind of the idea behind a lot of this. Uh, that's the whole reason why we push code out there, is so our users can use it. And naturally, users will find annoyances, they'll find little quirks, but most importantly, they'll find some bugs. And we want to make sure that we can fix those bugs. One of the problems is, is I can't go ahead and fix this using, uh, sorry, let me back up. Let's pretend for a second that I, I encountered a bug in 1.0.1. Well, 1.1.2 is not ready to be pushed out there. And so what we want to do is we want to make a fix in 1.0.1 and create a new release. So let's go ahead and we can just go, let's just pretend that I have a package version, but let's say 1.0.2. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. But now here's the kicker. In order for me to get this out to production, and we can take a, a better look over here, in order for me to get this out to production, I have to then overwrite what's ever in development as well as what's in QA. And that is not something that uh, is very appealing because we may end up in some sort of situation where we have data loss, especially once we start deploying out to the database, or we might end up in a situation where uh, you know we, we slow down QA because they can't promote, uh, sorry, they can't test anything. Uh, it just basically causes a whole bunch of headaches. Now, thankfully, this can be solved within Octopus Deploy. And what we're going to do is we are going to solve that using a different lifecycle. So let's first come over to our life cycles. And right now, we only have one life cycle, dev, QA, staging, and production. We want to add a new life cycle, and let's just call this hotfix. And let's add a description, life cycle to be used for em emergency hotfixes. And let's keep the retention policy the same. But what we're going to do here is we're going to add a new, or we're going to start, sorry, not going to add a new phase. I mean, we are, um, but we are going to start out with staging. We're not going to start out with dev, and then we're going to start out with production. Then we're going to move over to production. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on save. And so we have this new life cycle. Now let's take a look at both of our life cycles that we have out there. We have dev, QA, staging, and production, and we have another one that's used, used for staging and production. The next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and let's add the capability to use that lifecycle. Now we don't want to overwrite our default lifecycle. We most of the time, you know, 90% of the time, we're going to want everything to go to dev, QA, staging, and then production. But in a case of an emergency or anything along those lines, we want to be able to skip dev and QA and just go right to staging and production. And we can do that by using the channels feature. So I'm going to add a new channel. I'm going to again call this hotfix. I'm going to say this, you know, the, this channel should be used for hotfixes to production. And we're going to change the lifecycle. And we're not going to make it a default. So let's go ahead and click on save right now. All right. So I have a new channel and it appears on our project overview screen. What I'm going to do now 
is I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to change the channel. Now this is something that you should really only do, like you, should, you, you shouldn't be changing the channel in your releases willy-nilly. Um, I'd only recommend doing this if you have not pushed up anything. Like so that there, there's been no deployments whatsoever because if there have been deployments you, you end up kind of in this situation where the deployments it still existed it still happened but it's not going to appear as you want it to appear like in the overview screen or on the uh or on this screen as, as well so it it it's not recommended to do if you have it, if the release has been deployed anywhere typically it'd be better just to delete the release and start again but let's go ahead and let's click on deploy And let's deploy this, and so we can see it's going to go right to staging. And let's take an over. Let's take a look at what the overview screen is happening. So now what we're seeing is that staging is going to have version 1.0.2, while the default channel is still uh, well. Excuse me. And while Dev and QA still stay on 1.1.2, so we don't ever have a situation where we are uh, we're overwriting that or anything along those lines. Now. This is all well and good, but we want to make sure we don't have a situation where someone comes in and they act, they make a, they make a mistake. They they do something like this one dot one dot three, and they say, okay, now I want to, I want this to go out to hotfix. Oops, let's try that again. One dot one dot three. <laughs> we don't want this because the one dot one release is not ready to be pushed out to staging yet. The one dot one release hasn't passed QA or anything like that. So we want to prevent that from happening. And we can do that by adding in some package version rules. And so, so far up to this point, I've been using the same default package over and over and over again. And what we're going to do is we're, it, it, sorry, let me back up. Nine times out of 10, the version not even nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 10 out of 100, the package is going to match the release version. Um, they can be fairly synonymous with one another. So we want it to match that as well. So we're going to do a couple of things. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is show you my, <laughs> my, my, my folder drive. And we're going to want to upload a new version of the trident.web. And so th for this point, uh, we can actually have 1.1.2. And sorry, I'm, let's, let's go ahead and let's discard these changes for right now. So I'm going to upload another package. I'm just going to go ahead and drag this over here. And let's upload this. And I'm going to create another copy of this, and I am going to upload 1.1.0. Uh, one, sorry, 1.0.2. So it's going to take a few seconds for that to upload because it's 20 megs. Let's upload another package. Upload package 1.0.2. In the future, when we set up the build servers, um, they added that integration. Uh, we're not going to be manually uploading any packages. It's just this is just a lot simpler just to kind of demonstrate this type of functionality. All right, so it has been uploaded. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to come in here and we're going to add a version rule. And so let's go ahead and go back to channels. And let's go into the hotfix. And we want to add a version rule. And so there's only one package step. And we can actually design this rule. So let's go into the designer. So what we want to do is we do not want to allow any packages in the 1.1 release. <clears throat> and so what we can do is we can add in a version range. And so what we can say is 1.1. And then we're going to add a comma, and we're going to say 1.2, and we're going to add this. That's not what I wanted. Let's try that again. <laughs> there we go. So this is the version range that I've added in here. So what is, this is saying is it's going to accept any packages that, ha that starts with 1.0, 
and then it will reject it basically I can have anything go all the way up to so you can actually come in here and you can add in additional options so I could say 1.0.999999 and it's going to accept that it's it's going to it's going to allow any of that now if I were to change this to 1.1.0 it's going to reject that because it's going to that's pretty much what this version rule is saying so let's go ahead and hit OK and let's go ahead and click on save all right so the next thing I'm going to do I just realized that I uploaded 1.0.2 but in fact I want to upload 1.0.3 so let's take a look let's just do that really quick so I copy that in one more time all right let's upload that package there we go upload this so this is going to be let's let's say for a second that the 1.0.2 release it didn't fix the bug we kind of found another issue when it was do, going through staging and we need to have another release that's going to get created for 1.0.3 and in, in in the case of hotfixes that's actually not that uncommon where you have a situation where uh, you know you push something up there and you're trying to get something pushed out there and you think you've solved everything and then there's you know, someone comes up with a, another use case that you haven't thought about. Um, this is especially true in the situation when there's a, a show-stopping bug, or you know, when the pressure is ratcheted up to the maximum amount of uh, maximum amount. That you sometimes will find a problem within staging, and we we want to. That's what we, basically what we're going to have is like problem was found in staging. We need to create a new release. All right, so let's change the hotfix and so immediately it went to 1.0.3 if I were to select a version like it, it one of the nice things about this is it automatically checks only in this channel if I were to check this out it would say this package version does not satisfy so if I were to try to deploy this it would say no dice and I would have to come in here and I would have to force the version selection so it is possible to overwrite it but that is not something that I mean obviously that's not something you should be you should, you should be doing but in this case I'm just going to do 1.0.3 so what I've done is I'm preventing newer versions from accidentally going to staging when I don't want it to go I don't want any 1.1 packages to go out there so let's go ahead and click save and let's go ahead and deploy this up to staging now I didn't add any sort of version rules to my default lifecycle because I always want to have the latest and greatest go out there because it's going to go to dev and then go to QA and then go to staging and then go to production. And so that's what's happening right now. It's now we're redeploying up to staging. So in a nutshell, that's kind of how the the channels work is it provides you the capability to skip certain environments uh, depending upon your use case. Uh, another use case that you might run into is perhaps you want to have a different channel for dev and QA and then another one for staging and production. Uh, that's a little bit more uncommon but it's not out of the realm of reason. Um, what you might have is you might just have pre-release items. Uh, maybe you're deploying from a, a branch and you're just pushing that you know all your changes in the branches up to dev and QA first and then once it gets merged into the main branch and we'll get into branching in, in a little bit but once it gets merged into the main branch a fresh build is going to occur then it's going to get deployed to staging then it can go to production on something like that so that's not uncommon either uh, but this is typically the more common use case that I've seen out in the wild but uh, everyone uses channels just a slightly uh, a little bit differently but uh, again this is generally the 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 big two use cases that we, we will typically run into. So thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.